Now we will go for further, further detail so that you can understand how practical will work. Firstly, SAP will check what the process code is. This is the process code. Based upon this process code, SAP will go inside this function module, which is attached to the process code. In this function module, in this function module, SAP is writing a query. There is a select query. What is the select query? It is fetching data from this table based upon the message type, where condition is message type. And if you remember, this is the same to same table which we covered when we generated the IDOP interface for the BAPI using PDBG transaction code. At that time, I told you that the table to store the IDOP or BAPI interface is BDBG table. If I will show you that table, this is the table which we covered at that point of time, TBDPE. Now just relate how it will, how the reverse direction will work. So based upon the process code, SAP will go to this function module. In this table, it will pass the message type. So control will go to this table. In this table, SAP will pass the message type. This is our message type. Whenever SAP will pass the message type, this function module, SAP will get this function module. SAP will get this function module. You can see SAP will get this function module. SAP is fetching the function module and SAP will get this function module. Now you can see SAP is simply, simply calling the function module. And if we will see this function module, if we will see this function module, if I will see this function module, ultimately this function module has our function module, which we created. And in this function module, we have a logic to put data into employee table. Just see how the reverse direction is working. Process code has a function module. Inside that function module, SAP is checking what is the function module which is defined in which is defined in the table TBDBE depends upon the message type. And ultimately, in that inbound function module, we have our own function module which is just updating our employee table. Once we will do the practical, I will show you one by one, one by one, how it is triggering. Just see how the process it will be. Inside this function module, whenever this process code will be there inside this function module, just check the input. The input for this function module is IDOC, IDOC. So SAP will simply, simply process one IDOC. Whenever SAP will process the IDOC, when SAP will take the IDOC number, it will simply, simply pass the data to the function module. Second IDOC, then it will process. Third IDOC, it will process. Fourth IDOC, it will process. Fifth IDOC, it will process. So input to this function module is itself, is itself the IDOC. So it will process the IDOC and then it will pass it to our function module. And once the practical will start, it will give you more, more clarity. Now I will cover one more transaction code here and the topic will make more, more sense to you. See, when we created the IDOC interface through BDBG, we are able to see IDOC type, message type, segment type, inbound function module, all these things appeared, all these things automatically created. Now I will show you one transaction code, WE57. What is WE57? In WE57 transaction code, 
you can see the mapping of function module with your message type and idoc type if you remember in we82 transaction code we82 transaction code we have the mapping of message type and idoc type if i will show you that we have the mapping of message type and idoc type we have the mapping of message type and idoc type in this we57 there is a mapping of message type idoc type and function module and see we have not done anything whenever we generated the idoc interface through bdbg entry will go to this step this transaction code also and once i will show the entry you will 100% understand what is there now i will just simply simply show you so what is our message type i will go to the message type just see i will just go for scroll down bapi idoc input 1 i will just go up this is bapi idoc input 1 bapi idoc input 1 yes now i will just slowly scroll up bapi idoc input 1 this is your bapi idoc input 1 yes now we will just go for bapi idoc input 1 just see this is a function module this is our idoc type and this is our message type this message type this idoc type is automatically attached to one function module is this the same to same function module which is in our process code yes if i will show you through we42 itself so if i will go to the process code bapi if I will double click here, you can see this BAPI process code has this function module. So just see how SAP is doing everything. SAP automatically attach this function module to your process, to your message type, at your message type and IDOC type. At that time, I have not shown you because you will not understand how this function module is attached to these two things now you know the concept of process code process code has the function module and this function module is attached to our message type and idoc type so how the reverse processing is going on so what is the summary of the video in this video we cover the full understanding of process code Without process code, you cannot do anything because ultimately at the last, you need to process the IDOCs. So we have two types of process code, inbound process code, outbound process code. Inbound process code will process the IDOC, then pass the data to the application. Outbound process code will take the data first, then pass it to the IDOC. The transaction code for inbound process code, WE42. The transaction code for outbound process code, WE41. And every process code has a function module, which is helping us to process the IDOC. And we check in WE57 also, the entry came at that time only when we generated the IDOC interface through BDBG. But why I have not covered at that point of time? Because you will confuse at that point of time how I automatically one SAP function module attached to this. Now you understand this has a process code. Process code has this particular function module. Now in the next video, we will start with the final implementation because we finished with full BAPI we finished with full IDOC. In the next video, we will go for the migration using BAPI with IDOCs. So that's it in this video. Thank you.